Alright, so, um, it's SummerSlam time again, and, uh, I figured I would at least attempt to try to get my SummerSlam series review done again. I tried to start it last year, but then things didn't really go my way, and I couldn't finish it. I only got one done, but I'm gonna try to finish it this year. I don't think I'll finish it this year, but I'll try to, um, get a good amount of them up this year, hopefully. We're going to have to wait and see. Um, but if you want to check out, you know, my other SummerSlam series reviews, you can click right up there um, on the playlist. And I have um, all the SummerSlam series reviews so far. So far I have the 2012 predictions. I have the 2013 uh, predictions. Um, I have uh, the 2014 predictions and review. And I have some other stuff involving SummerSlam. You can also kick, click down below if you want to see my SummerSlam 2013 review that I did on the CM Brothers channel. Which you can check out also the CM Brothers channel by clicking right there. And that's how you cross promote a YouTube channel is you just uh, say that. So, I figured I would uh, do my get back on track and at least try to do um, another SummerSlam series review. I'm going to do... this. The second ever SummerSlam um, review, I'm going to do the WWF, um, which stands for World Wrestling Federation, SummerSlam, so WWF SummerSlam 1989 review, I believe that's the right year, yep, so WWF SummerSlam 1989, um, and I actually did like this show, I'm going to go through it um, more in depth as I go through it, but this show... Ended up delivering. I thought it was a nice old school show. Um, full of nice matches. And it wasn't just the matches that helped deliver. The characters that were on this show. Um, and it was just really good. I, it was a nice old school show. Um, and that we don't really see from WWE nowadays. I thought this was a nice show. So let's talk about this show. So we had Jesse the Body Ventura and Tony Schiavone on commentary for this show. I thought they were really good on commentary together. Like I said, but I probably said this in past videos before. Jesse the Body Ventura is great on commentary. I really enjoy him I'm on commentary. I think he does a really good job um, helping support the heels. Uh, and Tony Schiavone was pretty good himself. Um, I liked him. So, let's talk about this show. We had the first match on the show. And it was... Um, the Hutt Foundation, which consists of Brett the Hitman Hutt and Jim the Anvil Night Hutt versus the Brain Busters, um, which can, with, and the Brain Busters had Bobby the Brain Heaton in their corner, and the Brain Busters consist of Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard, um, and at this time, the Brain Busters were the current reigning and defending World Wrestling Federation, um, World Tag Team Champions, um, and the reason the titles went on the line, and I love the reason that Jesse the Body Ventura gave, was, well, this match was signed before the Brain Busters had won the tag team titles, so they probably didn't have enough time to really put that in the contract, so I, th I liked that there. Um, and um, I liked that line. And this match was a really nice old school tag team match. I really enjoyed this. St this, this was really good shit here. Um... And I really enjoyed this uh, tag team match. I thought it was really awesome. The Hart Foundation dominated the first majority of the match. Hitting some nice double team tag team moves. Um, one spot I liked in this match was... One, I don't remember which one it was. I, I think it was Arn Anderson. Was trying to get Bret Hart to, down for a pin. But Bret Hart was using his neck to stand up. And he had really good neck strength there. And when Bret Hart did the double arm drag to the Brain Busters. I thought that was a good spot there. Um... What else did I like in this match? Uh, then event, well, yeah, the double team moves that the Hart Foundation were doing in this match, I really enjoyed those those stuff. Then eventually, uh, Bret Hart tried to do an Irish whip to um, Jimmy the Anvil Nyhart to send him into the corner into Tully Blanchard, but Arn Anderson moved him out of the way. And then the Brain Busters got the heat on Jim the Anvil Nyhart for a while, and uh, they really dominated him. Then eventually, Brett the Headman Hart got the hot tag on Tully Blanchard again. He started going off on him. And uh, I thought that was nice stuff. And then um, 
eventually, uh, chaos starts to ensue, and everybody just starts fighting with each other, and, uh, Jim the Anvil, Nighthawk, and Arn Anderson are fighting outside the win, and, uh, Arn Anderson tries to punch Jim the Anvil, Nighthawk, but, An but Anvil ducks, and, uh, he ends up punching the steel post, which I like that spot, and then eventually, uh, Jim the Anvil, Nighthawk hits a slingshot, um, shoulder block inside the win on, um, Tully Blanchard, and then, uh, he, he, uh, picks up Bret Hart and, uh, drops him right onto, uh, Tully Blanchard so he can make the pin, and then, uh, but Bobby the Brain Heenan was distracting the referee, so the referee couldn't make the count, and then behind the referee's back, Arn Anderson went off the top rope and hit an axe handle on Bret Hart and, uh, covered Bret Hart, and he wasn't supposed to be the legal man, but the referee was just losing control in this match, and, um... You know, uh, the ref makes the count, and the Brain Busters end up winning the match. And I really, I really like this tag team match here. And I like how they kept, the commentators kept winning up that if the Hart Foundation won this match, they could have gotten themselves in line for a uh, tag team championship match, a world tag team championship match. But if they lose, they have to start all over and work their way up the code. So I did like how they put over this match a lot and tried to make it feel important. So... You know, I liked that, and I did like the match itself a lot. I thought it was really good. Nice old school tag team match. Totally worth checking out. So next, we had a Dusty Rhodes interview, and he cuts a promo um, on Honky Talk Man, and this is when Dusty Rhodes has this whole Pokey Docs gimmick going on, and he pretty much says that he's a better um, dancer, and, a be and he's better at getting down with it than Honky Talk Man is, because I guess that was the whole feud, and he says that he's going to kick... Um, Hockey Talks Man's ass in this match. He doesn't say ass, but it's pretty much what he references. The promo was weird, but it was awesome. I gotta say, that's what, that, I, I feel like, um, that's how I felt. And I, I loved it. Um, it was awesome. And I'm not just saying that just because Dusty Rhodes is dead now. I truly mean that. Uh, so... The next match was the we had the Honky Talk Man with Jimmy Hart Winside versus Dusty Rhodes. Um, I love hearing Dusty Rhodes theme song. I feel like that connects with the crowd really well. Everyone really gets going with it. And this Polka Dogs gimmick, like people have talked about in that documentary they did on him a few weeks ago, um, was supposed to be a rub on Dusty Rhodes, but he made it work, and boy did he ever. But this match, I really. I thought it was a nice match here. Um, Dusty Rhodes um, dominates the first half. He uh, beats the crap out of Honky Tonk Man. He has a bubonic elbow on him. And, uh, yeah, I thought that was nice. And uh, eventually, uh, Jimmy, J Jimmy Hart interferes, and Dusty Rhodes starts going after him. And then uh, Honky Tonk Man behind the referee's back because he's distracted by Jimmy Hart hits Dusty Rhodes in the ridge with a megaphone. Megaphone. And, um, dominates Dusty Rhodes for a while. Um, it look, and, uh, I like how they, one thing I miss that they do nowadays in wrestling is when the wrestler has, um, a guy in, like, a headlock or something, and it looks like the wrestler's out, so the referee will put, put, go to put his hand down three times, and if it goes down three times, the match is over. I miss that a lot, because then when the guy starts, you know, when the when it goes down a second time and then it's gonna go down a third, it just doesn't quite get there. I thought that's I think that's great psychology, and I really wish they would win that back. And Dusty Rhodes um tried to fight back, but then Honky Tonk Man hit a wicked knee to the gut on him, and then um Dusty Rhodes started to make his comeback, and then um eventually uh the referee gets knocked down, the and uh, Honky Tonk Man ends up recovering, and uh. He uh, he uh, asks for his guitar, and Jim and Jimmy Hart's gonna hit Dusty Rhodes with the guitar. Honky Tonk Man told him, but Dusty Rhodes ducks, and he act, Jimmy Hart accidentally hits a Honky Tonk Man, and then Dusty Rhodes hits an elbow on the uh, Honky Tonk Man for the win. I actually was shocked Dusty Rhodes won. I think they would put a uh, Honky Tonk Man over because he was like the young guy, but I am happy Dusty Rhodes won. I thought. It was good that he won. And then afterwards, they try to interview Honky Tonk Man, but he's just so out of it. He's saying, like, a bunch of nonsense. Um, but, yeah, this was really good stuff here. All right, so... Uh, so then Demolition, which consists of Axe and Smash, and Ken Duggan get interviewed. 
and they're, cut, they're going to be facing the Twin Towers, which consists of Akeem and Big Boss Man, and they're also going to be teaming up with uh, Andre the Giant in a uh, six-man tag team match. And they talk about how they're going to kick their asses tonight, and they Demolition talk about how Andre the Giant cost them the World Tag Team Championships, and Honky Talk Man says he doesn't want to be... Co- no, not Honky Talk Man. Ken Duggan. I don't know why I said Honky Talk Man. That was a botch and a half. Ken Duggan says that uh, he doesn't want to be referred to as Ken Duggan. He wants to be referred to as Ken Demolition. He's actually wearing like a demolition mask. And uh, later on in the night, I want to forget it if I don't mention it now, Jesse the Body Ventura, when he comes out with it, says, this is Jason Voorhees because it looked like a Jason Voorhees mask. He's like, we found Jason Voorhees. We know who's bu- what's behind the mask. And I thought that was a great line by Jesse the Body Ventura. He had a lot of great lines on this show. Um... And that was, I thought that it was a good interview segment. Alright, so this is probably not my favorite part of the show. Next was Mr. Perfect versus the Red Rooster. Um, what the hell was up with the Red Rooster? So he comes out and it, the Red Rooster is, I guess, the guy that wears like the thin that the Rooster has on the head. Like that red thin. It's just really weird. I don't get the appeal. I think the character... Maybe it's just the times thing, because I, I didn't grow up in that time, but I don't think the character, it just didn't connect with me when it kept, when it came out. I thought it was weird. I just how I honestly felt. I just thought it was awkward. I didn't really think the match was that great either. Um, but the character was just really awkward. Um, and Mr. Perfect ends up winning with the Perfect Plex. And they're hyping this up too, that he's, he's really perfect. Because that's what his gimmick was. That he's perfect. He's a perfect wrestler and everything. And he has like this undefeated streak. Which I like. And Mr. Perfect wins. I thought this was good stuff here too. Uh, no, no really complaints. Well I mean I really think the match itself. But I liked Mr. Perfect here. Um, thank God it just was quick I guess. I just wasn't a fan of the Red Booster gimmick. So I couldn't get into the match. And I just was caught off guard I guess. But Mr. Perfect. I uh gone back and watched his matches, and I've actually, I'm a pretty big fan, I, well, not a big fan, but I'm a, a fan of Mr. Perfect, I do like him, I think he's really good on the microphone, I think he was good, um, on, uh, in the wind, and, uh, you know, uh, do I think he, I don't think, uh, he was, you know, um, do I think he could have been a few, a WWF champion? Probably not, I don't, he was probably, like, the, that mid-card guy, um, that probably could get shots at the WWF champion, but I don't think really think the company could tr- could carry that that he could really care like he could be good with the title, but I don't think he could carry the company with that championship. It's just you know how it is. It's just me being honest here. I don't I I I do like Mister Perfect. I just don't think that uh he really was main event. Like I thought, like I, he he was really like you know in that main event caliber. Some guys weren't in that main event caliber. He probably wasn't one of them. Could he have been it in a different time period? Probably. But this is back in the Hogan era. You know, so it's tough to uh, be big in the Hogan era. And then uh, it was just too late for him, you know, when, once Hogan left for WCW and stuff like that. So um, I think that that's what hurt Mr. Perfect. It was just the time period that he was in. Um, next, though, uh, Ravishing Rick Wood. And Bob and the Brain Heenan get interviewed. And, um... Ravish and Rick Rude says that he's going to put an end to Ultimate Warrior. Uh, because they were having an Intercontinental Championship match that night. At the time, Ravish and Rick Rude was the current, um, Intercontinental Champion. And, um... He says that, uh, Ultimate Warrior is an ultimate liar. He's better than Ultimate Warrior. And he says that he's going to put an end to the Ultimate Warrior because he is the ultimate Intercontinental Champion. And then Bobby the Brain he pretty much says the same thing, but kind of differently. It was pretty good promo here. I, I liked it. So then next, we had the Walkers, which consist of uh, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. And the Walkers teamed up with Tito Santana to face Rick Martel and the fabulous Rougeau brothers. Uh, I don't really know, to be honest with you, who's in that tag team. I always have to look it up, and I actually forgot to look it up before I did this. Um... I think it's Jacques and Rougeau or something. It's I I could probably figure it out. Um, I know the tag team. I just don't really know who's in the tag team because I only know them as the tag team. 
Um, but uh, the Rick Martel and the Fabulous Rizzo Brothers were managed by Slick and Jimmy Hart. And uh, this was a really fun six-man tag team match. Um, really quick, really fast pace in the beginning. And then it got and then it got slow at times, but then it would pick back up, um, and it was really awesome uh, because everybody I think was feuding with each other. The Walkers at the time were feuding with the Rizzo brothers, and the um, Tito Santana was feuding with Rick Martel. I don't really know why, but they uh, but they were, and uh, I liked it. The tag team division back in the old days was. Probably the best it ever gotten, because you had this tag team, other tag teams like that, uh, like uh, the Killer Bees. You had the Heart Foundation. You had the British Bulldogs. You had um, just all these tag teams that I don't even think the that if the WWE tried to build up that tag team division, it would be good, but it wouldn't live up to these standards because the tag team divisions back in the old days were just off the charts. Um, then, but, uh, this match, like I said, was really fast-paced, uh, in the beginning, everybody just starts fighting with each other, uh, then they take each other out, the walkers start hitting double arm drags, and Tito Santana, and double drop kicks, and Tito Santana hits an arm drag on Rick Martel, and Rick Martel and Tito Santana didn't really touch on this match that much to really kind of make that feud, anytime, uh, Tito Santana came in, Rick Martel would tag out, um, and I thought that was a nice touch. And then uh, they domi- the uh, Rick Martel's team dominates uh, Marty Jannetty for a little bit. And then uh, Tito Santana gets the hot tag on uh, one of the Rujo brothers. And then uh, they dominate um, Rick Martel for a while. And I mean a while. But they did some good tag team moves there. They did this one spot where uh, the Rujo bro- one of the Rujo brothers got a Boston grab in on Tito Santana. And behind the referee's back, uh, the other Rujo brother kneed him right in the back of the head. I thought that was nice. Um, and they did some nice tag team moves. Um, but they got the heat for a while on um, Tito Santana. Then eventually, uh, Shawn Michaels got the hot tag um, on um, Rick Martel. And he started going off on him. He had a body slam. He got off the top rope, did his elbow. And um, that was nice stuff. And uh, eventually it starts to break down again. Everybody just starts fighting with each other. And uh, behind the referee's back, Rick Martel takes a cheap shot of Marty Jannetty, covers him, and gets the pin. But Shawn Michaels was actually the legal man. But they were wearing the same attire. You really couldn't tell. So I like the finish there. Um... And I like this tag team match a lot. I can't. I. I it was really good. Um, I didn't really give a lot of information, but you know, I really didn't need to. It's just really good, fast-paced tag team action. Um, I gave some spots what I liked, but there was probably other spots I liked. But I just kind of gave what what I thought was appropriate to give for the tag. What I thought about the match because I pretty much explained everything that happened. But it really is a good tag team match. You really should check it out. Like I said, the tag team division was on its highest at this point. Um, Alright, so next, the Ultimate Warrior gets interviewed. And he says that he's going to take down Andre the Giant. And he's going to take... Um, he's going to pin... Um, R- Ricky... No, uh, Ravishing Rick Rude. Um, one, two, three. And take back his Intercontinental Championship. Um, and I really like this promo here. I always like the Ultimate Warrior. Um... I've been a huge fan of him since uh, he's come back to uh, WWE, um, and I liked it. It was awesome stuff, uh, But and uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say there. So then we had that IC title match between uh, Rude and Warrior, and I'm not going to cover the match here because I've kind of already covered it um, when I did my review of the Ultimate Warriors DVD, uh, so I'll post that link on the top below uh, so you guys can check, find so you guys can watch that video, and somewhere in that video, I do review that match, um, and I feel like if I just review it now, that I would just have the same opinion, so I don't really want to repeat myself, so if you want to check out what I thought about that match, click up there, um, but I'll just say now that that match totally is worth checking out, that's all I'll say. Uh, 
So then uh, Mr. Perfect gets interviewed, and he says that uh, he is the great, he is the most perfect wrestler right now in the WWF. And he says that people like the Red Rooster just need to know uh, when to when to call it quits, and that uh, he is just a footnote in the WWF. And he says that he's going to take himself right to the top and become WWF champion. I thought that was a pretty good promo there, and I really enjoyed that. Next, uh, this was just really interviews here. Rowdy Roddy Piper gets interviewed. He says that he cost um, Ravishing McRue the IC title because he's been being rude to everybody, and eventually it's going to have to come to a price. You can't just, you have to eventually pay for your actions, and that's what he did there. And he says that he's going to continue to be rude. So I thought that was a nice touch there. And then uh, Rugged Ronnie Garvin got interviewed. He was like some famous guy at that time. I don't really know what he did because it's out of my time period. He, before he came in, they say anything though. Bobby the Brain Heated and Ravish and Rick Rude come up and interrupt him. And they pretty much say that it's bullshit that they, Ravish and Rick Rude lost the IC title. Because uh, he was cheated out of the championship by uh, Roddy Roddy Piper. And he says that uh, he's still... Co in his mind, the IC champion, and uh, Bobby the Brain Heated says that we should just redo the whole match right now, we should just redo the whole thing, and uh, it doesn't happen, and then they kind of walk off, but I really like that there, it was, they were pissed and angry, I thought that made sense, and they had every right to be pissed and angry, so I thought that was uh, cool. Um, next was uh, Andre the Giant and the Twin Towers with Slick and Bobby the Brain Heated versus Demolition and Ken Duggan. Um, this match was a decent match. Um, I thought it went. I didn't really think it needed to be too long. Um, everybody probably is going to complain about that, but I didn't think it needed to be. Um, and uh, a lot of the match was uh, them getting the heat on uh, Axe. Then uh, Smash got the hot tag, and he started and he hit body slams on the Twin Towers, and Andre the Giant came in and just hit a right hand on him, and. Um, a TM goes off the top and, and hits a rope and hits a splash onto uh, Smash. And behind the referee's back, he's distracted by Andre the Giant. Ken Duggan takes his 2x4, uh, which he... And Ken Duggan, too, was actually had, had, had face paint like Action Smash did, cause they, like Demolition did, because they usually wear face paint. And it was like and it was the American flag, which I thought was cool. And his, um, Ken Duggan's 2x4... Uh, had what, the American flags on it and stuff, which I liked. And he hits Akeem in the back of the head with it, and Smash covers him and gets the win. And I actually was shocked. I actually thought Andre the Giant and the Twin Towers would win because they were the bigger team. And uh, it didn't happen. And I liked it because it looked like that just because you're big doesn't mean you're going to win. And what happened here pretty much was um, Andre the Giant and the Twin Towers just got outsmarted there, so I liked that. And I... I thought this was nice stuff. I do like Ken Duggan. Um, I think uh, Ken Duggan has always been great in the WWF. And I, I liked him. I liked Demolition. They were a great tag team. Twin Towers. Decent tag team. They were a big tag team. They were destructive. Andre the Giant. I've always been a fan of Andre the Giant. And I liked that. So that was nice. And I like that they took a five minute intermission too. Because sometimes they just kind of... Nowadays in the, in the pay-per-views... They just kind of throw matches on to kill time, but don't worry about it. But sometimes fans need breaks, you know, to take a piss and stuff like that. So I like that they took that five minute intermission. Uh, I don't really know what they did. I get doing that five minute intermission, but they did something. So then uh, the million dollar man Ted DiBiase got interviewed. He he was with his bodyguard Virgil, and he's uh, set to face Superfly Jimmy Snucker. And he cut the promo, a really good promo on Ted DiBiase. He talks about how he's the million dollar man. He uh, is the self-proclaimed million dollar champion because he was doing that at the time. And uh, he talks about how he has all this money and Superfly Jimmy Snuck is just coming back and he's just going to get me put down. Um, and he even said that uh, all he do even though he's uh, an American and he's been wrestling for a while, all he is is just a native that eats, that eats coconuts and bananas. And uh, he's he's nothing compared to my wealth. I thought that made the match pretty personal. And he had taken out Jake the Snake Roberts. I don't really know how he did it because I didn't it didn't really show it or anything. But he said that uh, you're gonna end up like Jake the Snake Roberts, and I'm gonna be standing on the top of the WWF. I thought that was a nice touch there. Uh, 
Next was uh, Hercules versus Greg the Hammer Valentine with Jimmy Hart Winside. And rugged Ronnie Garvin was the special guest red announcer for this match. He was so annoying in this match. He pretty much uh, did what he what was supposed to do, but he was very biased. Um, he pretty much insulted Greg the Hammer Valentine and Jim Jimmy Hart. Um, calling Jimmy Hart like a sleazy little kid, little girl. And Greg the Hammer Valentine just, you know, saying that, like, he's not, he doesn't weigh as much. He's lying about his weight. It was just weird. But, um, the match wasn't very long. Hercules dominated the whole match. And then Greg the Hammer Valentine rolled up Hercules. And uh, behind the referee's back, he used the ropes for leverage and got the win. I thought that was a nice touch there. And then eventually, Rugged Ron and Garvin, though, says, in my opinion... From my point of view, Hercules really won. But then the referee's like, N no, Greg the Hammer Valentine won. And he tells him, but then he says, okay, Hercules wins by disqualification. That was so annoying. So then Greg the Hammer Valentine punched him, which he deserved. Because even though like Greg the Hammer Valentine cheated, he still won. Like, at least if I was them, I would at least say he won, even though I didn't like it. You gotta res respect it. You gotta admit it. You gotta admit it. You can't just not say he won. And then Hercules and Greg the Hammer and Valentine start going at it. Rugged Jimmy, Rocky, Rugged Ronnie Garvin gets back in the wind, punches Greg the Hammer and Valentine, and that was really it there. I thought this was all just really weird. Um, so next we had a Macho Man Randy Savage, Sensational Sherry Elm, and Zeus interview. Oh boy, Zeus. I am going to give my thoughts on Zeus. Um... Later on, when in the, during the main event, because they're having this main event tag team match, and they pretty much say that they're going to uh, destroy Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and uh, they, and if, and if uh, Miss Elizabeth shows up, they're going to put an end to her, and that was really it there. Zeus didn't say anything. It was all Macho Man and Sensational Sherry saying this stuff. I didn't like Macho Man Randy Savage when he was healed, though. I thought he was really good here. I thought that was awesome. He's always been great, though. So then we get the the next match. It's Ted DiBiase with Virgil versus Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Uh, Superfly Jimmy Snuka dominates this match. I've always liked Superfly Jimmy Snuka. I've liked his theme song. I thought that always got me going. And I think he's like a unique wrestler. He's a nice old timer you could probably bring back. He's too old to be wrestling now. But I thought uh, he just had he just felt different. He had this different style of wrestling that I liked, and he was a nice character. I don't really remember him ever saying anything either. He was just unique. I liked him. And Ted DiBiase, I've always liked him. I thought, like I said, he was a great gimmick. And I liked him. And Superfly Jimmy Snucker dominates the match for a while. And then eventually uh, Virgil interferes in the match. And he goes after him. And then uh, Ted DiBiase um, dominates the match for a while. And Superfly Jimmy Snucker takes, makes a comeback. He's going to hit his Superfly Splash off the ropes. But Virgil comes in. He, st he beats up Virgil. Then Ted DiBiase throws him head first into the steel post. And DiBiase gets back in the win. And he wins by count out. Which I didn't mind that finish there, actually. Um, I know they don't like it when the end matches off a count out. But I thought uh, I didn't really mind it here. I don't really know why. But I just didn't. Then Superfly Jimmy Snucker attacks both of them. And he hits the Superfly Splash on Virgil. I thought this was nice. I didn't mind this. And uh, before the match, I forgot to mention Ted DiBiase cut a promo calling out Superfly Jimmy Snuka. So, saying, I want to take you out just like I did a Jake the Snake Roberts. Which was probably teasing that whole thing that Jake the Snake Roberts would come back. I, I thought that was actually going to happen here, but it didn't. Um, then Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber of Beefcake cut a, get interviewed. And they cut a nice promo. Hogan talked a promo about how he's going to kick... How they're gonna kick, they pretty much kind of promo how they're gonna kick um, Zeus and Randy Savage's ass, and they're gonna cut one of their hairs off, and they even might do it to Sensational Sherry. I thought this was a nice touch here. Um, not only really a lot to say. And then before the match actually started, because this the main event was next, but before the main event started, the genius, and if you don't know who the genius is, it was Randy Savage's brother, Randy. Uh, I forget his name, but it was his. Randy Savage's brother, uh, Manny Poflo, I think his name was. Um, and he cuts this great poem. 
and pretty much puts over Randy Savage and Zeus and puts down um, Hulk Hogan and uh, who was the Bubba Beefcake. I thought it was nice, and it, it was really cool. It was unique, the genius. It was a nice gimmick, and it was different. Um, so then we get the main event, uh, and it was weird. So it's Macho Man Randy Savage and Zeus with Sensational Sherry versus Brutus the Barber Beefcake and Hulk Hogan. The match was built up because um, Hulk Hogan and Zeus were both in that No Holds Bad movie. Zeus wasn't even a wrestler. He was in through that movie. And then Zeus, um, Hogan was supposed to have a match at Saturday night's main event, but Zeus was there. He attacked him before he had his match. And then uh, Randy Savage, I guess, was was feuding with Brutus the Barber Beefcake for a little while. And Hogan and Savage had that history from WrestleMania V. Um, and he was allowed to pick a partner. He picked Zeus. And he... he Savage actually was good. He touched us. He was saying, be there. He, he was... He said, he said a really good line. That was awesome. Like, be there at SummerSlam, but don't be late. I thought that was really cool. It was something like that, but... I thought it was awesome. And then Zeus says, talks, says Hogan and Brutus to be over Beefcake. We're going to destroy you. Then um, it shows the next week when Hogan and Beefcake accept. And then it shows a match between Savage and Beefcake. And Zeus and Beefcake's about to win with a sleeper hold. And uh, Zeus comes in, attacks him, gets him in the bear hug. But Hogan tries to come in and attack him. Zeus feels no pain. He even tries to hit him with a chair, but Zeus is, Zeus is just a pervious pain. That's Zeus's whole gimmick. Um, and then we have the match itself. And I want to talk about Zeus. I understand why he had to do this match, I guess. I can understand that because they were probably wanting to get this movie some publicity, publicity. And you have Zeus wrestle at SummerSlam. It makes SummerSlam look good because you're having a guy in that movie. But dude, Zeus sucks. Zeus just this shit. He was awful here. He's just awful in general. I hated Zeus. I don't understand why they brought Zeus in, actually, to an extent. I, part of me understands it. Part of me don't. Doesn't. He can't talk. He looks awkward. Um, he's a big guy, but he just looks weird. Like, he doesn't look like he's supposed to be that big. Like, I just can't describe it. And let's get to the match. That's just why I was fearing how this match was going to go because I was watching Zeus's other stuff and the moves he would hit were impressive um, when he was hitting that stuff in that Saturday night's main event. But I'm like, okay, maybe they're just saving him. But then I was thinking maybe the match could deliver as long as Macho Man wrestled the match mostly. But let's talk about the match. So before the match starts, we were wondering whether or not Miss Elizabeth was going to show. We weren't really sure about that, but she ended up showing I thought that was a nice touch there because the Macho Man had just broken away from Miss Elizabeth. I think because Hogan, she went with Hogan instead because Hogan beat Savage at WrestleMania 5. Um, so her Savage acquired Sensational Sherry. And uh, what happened here was uh, everybody just starts brawling in the beginning. Beefcake's fighting with Savage and Hogan's trying to put do some damage to Zeus but it's no effect. And, uh, Zeus gets that bear hug in on, Hogan tries to pick him up for a body slam, he can't pick him up. Zeus tries to hit a bear hug, Zeus gets him up for a bear hug, and he beats the crap out of Hogan, but then, um, Beefcake goes off the top while Hogan's in the bear hug, and that's an axe handle on him, but it doesn't work. He catches him into a bear hug, and Zeus just destroys everybody, he hit, he's choking everybody. It was bad, um... So then Savage gets in the match, and when Savage was in the match, it was actually pretty good. And a lot of the match at first is just the heels getting the heat on Hogan. I like that move that Savage does where he runs across the win and he hangs up his opponent on the ropes. He did that to Hogan here. I like that spot. And, uh, I just gotta tell you, the stuff when Savage was in the match, it was good. But anytime Zeus got in, it was fucking awful. The guy can't do shit. He, didn't, he can't do any moves. He can't wrestle. Why did they bring this guy in? He can't wrestle. He can't do any moves. He was choking the guy. I can't believe he main evented SummerSlam over people that should have probably been main evented SummerSlam. Holy crap. Um, he did choke holds. All he did was bail hugs. 
He barely and choked people. That's all he did. He didn't. He didn't do any punches. Um, I don't think that's all he did was choke people. Was a choking his opponent. All he did was either choke Hogan or Beefcake and a bail hug. That's all he did. Um, it's only two moves, and everybody complains that Hogan does doesn't have enough moves. But let's say Hogan does the punches. He does the body slams. He does suplexes on occasions. He Hogan at least does wrestling moves. Who's loose doesn't do shit. But then eventually he gets a tag on Hogan gets the hot tag on Beefcake, and uh, he goes off on Savage. Um, I thought they did some nice stuff there. I thought he uh, at one point um, Beefcake hit a wicked knee on uh, Savage, and then he gets uh, Savage in the sleeper, and uh, Zeus comes in and hits Savage I think, and uh, behind the referee's back Savage hits Beefcake with his with his sensational Sherry's post and then um, Savage keeps trying to pin him but Hogan keeps breaking it up and he keeps going after Savage because that way he doesn't because Beefcake's pretty much out of it and uh, Beefcake tries to hit the sleeper on um, no the way no the post happened because Beefcake got the sleeper in on uh, Zeus and uh, he hit him with his post and then uh, eventually uh, they both t Savage and uh, Beefcake take each other out with clotheslines. Hogan gets the hot tag on Savage. He starts hit, hit, hitting all his moves on him. And then, um, let me think. Uh, Savage uh, gets the upper hand. He tags in Zeus. He hits Savage, hits his elbow. And Hogan gets right back up, hits an atomic drop on Savage. And then uh, it's just Hogan versus Zeus. And Hogan starts going off on Zeus. He's starting to stack him a little bit. He hits a clothesline. Zeus throws down. Hogan uh, hits him in the face. And then behind the referee's back, Hogan hits Zeus with his po with Zeus with the post. And then he hits a body slam and a leg drop on Zeus for the win. Thank God it was over. The match actually, any time oh, Zeus was in the match, it was when it was bad. But the match I can't really complain about completely because... Savage was in it. I understand why they did this match because they wanted to sell the No Holds Bond movie, and maybe people liked that. I heard I heard that movie was like a hit back then, so maybe like if you had Zeus show up, it was good publicity. I still don't get it though. It was just shit. Um, then afterwards, Hogan hits an atomic drop on uh, Sherry, and then uh, uh, Miss Elizabeth hits her with I think the post. I didn't really see what it was, and then Beefcake cuts. Sherry's ponytail off. I thought that was awesome there. Then that was the end of SummerSlam. And I really did enjoy this show. Um, I think what I liked about it was just it was an old school show. It was a, They really went all out for this show for SummerSlam. They, they, I think they tried to get everybody in on the card. Um, and I liked some of the characters that they had. It's just nice to go back and watch this wrestling. I, and they had some good matches on this show. They had that... Uh, the, the tag team match with the Blame Busters and uh, the Hard Foundation was good. What else was good on this show? The, t the IC title match was probably my favorite match of the night if you want to go in-win components-wise. Actually, it probably is my favorite match of the night just because of that feud and stuff like that. Uh, I did like Ted DiBiase versus uh, Superfly Jimmy Snuka. I did like... Uh, I didn't really like Hercules versus Greg the Hammer Valentine because of... Rugged Lonnie Galvin, I thought he was annoying. The the both I liked both the six man tag team match with uh, Andre and his team versus Demolition and King Duggan, and then uh, Tito and the Walkers versus Rick Martel and you know the Bujo Brothers. Um, and I actually did like what I liked about Mr. Perfect was that they were doing that undefeated streak thing, and I liked that. So uh, I did like this show. It was a nice old school wrestling show. It's a nice show. I, I actually would recommend this show for like a WWE Network recommendation. If I was asking what I would recommend on the network, this would probably be one of those shows. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. I am going to see if I could try to finish out these SummerSlam series reviews or at least get a good amount of them done. But that's pretty much it, guys. If you want to subscribe to my non-wrestling channel where I talk about non-wrestling things, you can click right on top right there on the Talkinator. And you can subscribe to my friend James the Heberman Hebert's channels. He has two YouTube channels. James Hebert, where he, talks to, where he makes custom Titan Tron to wrestlers. And Weymouth Youth Wrestling, where he's going to be doing that tournament we talked about. I'm going to be in that tournament. 
and I'm going to win that tournament and win the WYW Championship. And you can also subscribe down there, down below, to subscribe to me, um, where you can get future videos from me in the future. And I'll talk to you guys later.